Hey there, and welcome to Learn WordPress. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to perform some more advanced site management tasks on a multi-site network. You will learn about the different possible site statuses, what happens when you delete a subsite, how to export a subsite to a single site install, and how to convert a multi-site network install back to a single site install. There are some site status options that are available to the network admin that are useful to know about. Deactivating a site will update the site status to be deleted and shows a message to anyone visiting the site. Additionally, there is a deactivate blog action hook that is fired when a site is deactivated and an activate blog action hook that is fired when a site is activated that can be used to run additional functionality when a site is activated or deactivated. Archiving a site will update the site status to archived and show an archive message to anyone visiting the site URL, but no additional action hooks are fired. Finally, marking a site as spam will update the site status to spam and show the same message as archiving, but again, no additional hooks are fired. Deleting a site from the network will remove all content associated with that site, including posts, pages, comments, and any other custom content types. It also removes any tables in the database that were used to house the site's content. Unlike when you trash a post or page, once you delete a site, you cannot undo this action. Under certain circumstances, you might want to extract one of the subsites to its own single site WordPress install. This is possible, but requires some manual steps. There are a few ways to do this. We'll just cover one possibility. First, in the network admin, switch to the subsites dashboard. Then, browse to the tools export page. Here, you can use the WordPress export tool to export the content to the WordPress extended RSS or WXR format. Then, create the new single site and the associated user. Once you've created the site, make sure to install any plugins or themes that were used on the subsite. Then, browse to Tools Import and use the WordPress importer to import the data into the new site. First, install it and then click Run Importer. Choose the file you just created from the export and click Upload File and Import. Lastly, make sure to assign the data to the correct user. Once the data is imported, manually copy the uploads directory for the subsite over to the new single site install. You will find the subsite uploads directory in the WP content uploads sites directory of the multi-site install in a folder with the same name as the subsite ID. Last but not least, install and run a search replace tool like better search replace to update any URLs in the database. You will need to search for and replace the subsite URL with the new single site URL. If you were pointing a top-level domain to the subsite, this last step might not be necessary. Finally, make sure to test everything out and make sure it's working as expected. An alternative to the WordPress data export option is to manually copy the database tables for the subsite to the new site. However, this might lead to further issues if the content isn't associated with the correct user. If you have any plugins that create custom database tables or custom data, you might need to manually copy these tables or this data over to the new installation. In that case, it might be easier to rely on paid third-party backup solutions that have multi-site extensions and will handle this for you. It's also possible to convert a multi-site back to a single-site install. This is useful if you no longer need the multi-site functionality but want to retain the original site. If you have other subsites, it might be a good idea to export them to single site installs first and then delete the subsites 
as this will delete the subsite content tables. Additionally, delete any users that were created for the subsites. To revert back to a single site, you first need to remove all the multi-site related constants in the wp-config file. Once you do this and refresh your dashboard, it will revert back to a single site install. You might need to log in again. If you see this message, it's because you're trying to access an admin URL for the network admin. In that case, simply change the URL to the regular WP admin path. Then, if you previously updated the HD access file, you will need to revert that back to the original HD access file. You can do this by resetting the permalinks to whatever you want them to be. As you can see, this resets the HD access file. Lastly, manually delete any tables specifically created during the multi-site installation, namely WP blog meta, WP blogs, WP registration log, WP signups, WP site, and WP site meta. If everything went well, you should now have a working single site install of your original main site. And that wraps up this tutorial on some advanced multi-site management tasks. Happy coding!